Oh, I didn't see you there. So you want to know if you could run a home assistant off of an actual potato? No. This isn't Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares, you scalding disappointment. But, today we're going to talk about what hardware you can run it off. This is Automation Haven. Let's get into it. So, today I'm going to break down a big question, and that's what's the right hardware to run a home assistant installation? So if you're new to the space, we're just going to take a second to define exactly what a server is. And then, we can define what hardware best fits its requirements. So a server is essentially a computer that's connected to our network 24-7. And it'll connect up to our router here. And via this connection, we can serve up the files and automations which we can access and control via our own personal PC or laptop. So what this means is that even if we take the laptop or PC out of the equation and power it down or disconnect it from the network, we'll always have this server which is powered up, ready to go in automating tasks in the background. And we can leverage this even further by exposing our server over the web as opposed to just locally on our own network. Picture this, you've sat down at an internet cafe and you've just hacked the NSA. Hands like it's him, scum. Fuck, it's the FBI and you're going to jail. The evidence is insurmountable and you're thinking to yourself, wait, did I leave the oven and or lights on? Boys. Fortunately, we've actually established a connection from this local cafe's Wi-Fi to our own home Wi-Fi. And thanks to this connection, we can actually view the status of all of our devices as well as control them from a single view thanks to our always on home server. And that brings us to the meat and potatoes of this video, which is essentially what defines a great hardware option for a smart home automation server. And I've got some great examples laid about. Within my hands, I hold a machine from the early 2000s. The software devs used to ride these babies for miles. So the good thing about using an old laptop is that you'll either already have one laying around or you can find one second hand for next to nothing. In terms of power, you're essentially using more watts than something like a small computing device, but more on that later. In terms of scalability, typically the built-in CPU and RAM should more than suffice for the requirements of the average home assistant installation. But these laptops are designed to be powered on 24-7 and their cooling systems aren't really sufficient for sustained and heavy workloads. Prolonged use can lead to overheating and reduce the lifespan of the internal components. Not to mention the durability concerns of the hinges, keyboards, and displays. In my own personal experience, I've found that getting this up and running on a Windows or a Linux based system is typically easier than getting it going on Macs. So option two is a Raspberry Pi. This one is the four, and I've got mine in this nifty little case here, but what we're talking about is the small form factor computing device right here in the bottom, which is it's basically a small computer. So by design, these boards are gonna draw a lot less power than something like a laptop or a dedicated home server. So do keep in mind that you're gonna be trading computational power for this efficiency. I'd personally recommend the eight gigabit model, which will give you a little leeway in terms of RAM. But ultimately, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, I would personally recommend to solely give this the task of automating your smart home running home assistant and then if you want to branch out and use other services to host those on a different device at the time of this recording you can actually get a pi 4 for as low as 71 pounds but that's not accounting for the keyboard and mouse and display if you don't already have that already to configure the pi as well as the sd card maybe an external case if you don't have that any hats and any additional tools or wires for testing and at that point you're looking at an arm a leg and your firstborn child <laughs> Getting Home Assistant up and running on a Raspberry Pi is actually a fairly documented and straightforward process, which makes this a great solution for someone who's just starting out. So next up, we've got the Intel NUC, and this is basically a mini PC. And also right here, I've got the Mac Mini, but it doesn't really matter what year, it doesn't really matter what model. Um, as mini PCs, both of these are pretty much gonna out perform the Raspberry Pi in any sort of um, meaningful tests. 
In terms of installation, I'd say that getting this up and running on the Intel mini PC is fairly documented, but you might run into some issues if you aren't too experienced with the Mac and virtualized environments. So what you're getting here is a bit of a sweet spot between the laptop and the Raspberry Pi where you have that small form factor but you still need to supply the peripherals including a display, a keyboard, a mouse and anything else that you need for the installation of the software. And in the case of either of these options, what you will be trading is that minimal carbon footprint for a substantial boost in power. And it powers your game and you're trying to build out a system from the get-go that's packed to the brim with services and you happen to live in an area with extremely cheap electricity then this might be the ideal option for you so next up we got the network attack storage device aka the nas now if you already have a nas laying around or it's in your buy list then this serves as a great dual purpose option and i'd highly recommend this for intermediate users but if you're a beginner well hold your horses in this one i'm currently rocking the ds920 plus as part of my own setup and the closest thing that synology has as part of their current lineup would be the ds923 plus so if you're going for Synology, I'd highly recommend one of the Plus models, which are capable of containerization. This way you have the option of Home Assistant running either in a containerized environment or within a virtual machine. So bear in mind what you might have with the NAS is that it's typically serving as a dual purpose or multi-purpose device where maybe it's filling the role of your media server and filling the role of your home automation server and filling the role of your proxy server and so forth. And what you don't want here is for the NAS to sort of, sort of half-heartedly handle these tasks instead of giving its full attention to the home automation, which is what you could do with a smaller form factor device. Electricity-wise, it's actually going to be pulling less watts than having an always-on laptop would. And if you do go with my recommendation of going for the DS923+, Plus, bear in mind this will rack you up a hefty bill of £540, and that's without the additional hard drives that you will need to hold all of your data. Just take a look at the dumper on the DS920 series. Oh, I can fix her. About to add Dang. Dude, Auga. Auga. Here at Synology, we pride ourselves in making network attack storage devices that are caked up from the neck down. Home Assistant Green is designed to work right out of the box. That means no fiddling about with SD cards, virtual machines, containers, any of that hard stuff. You just plug it in, boot it up, and you're cooking. So I wish I had some stock footage of this thing, but it's small, power efficient, and purpose built for home assistance. So it runs smoothly without any of the headaches that come with repurposing a general purpose device. And although this is typically marketed at beginners, this thing is no slouch. You can run your automations, integrations, and custom add-ons while using the bare minimum amount of electricity. Currently, the Home Assistant Green Kit will run you up about 86 pounds in the UK and won't require any additional hard drives, SD cards, and power supplies to get started. Everything is available in the initial setup kit, so if you were just starting out, then this option is goated to the heavens. <laughs> Now the main downside going for the Home Assistant Green Kit would be the hard cap on how scalable of a device this is. You're going to be limited to two USB ports, 32 gigabytes of storage, and four gigabytes of memory. If you're a beginner, then you have a long way to go before any of this becomes problematic as these won't really impact the performance of your setup until you've acquired more devices than sense and more automations than friends. So I'd like to also bring to attention the different wattage that you're going to experience over time with these various devices. Obviously with the Home Assistant Green device and the Raspberry Pi, you're going to experience a lot lower wattage just because these are using ARM chips instead of the CPUs, the x86 CPUs that you're going to get with the Network Attached Storage device, the old laptops, or the mini PCs. And really this is a bit of a trade-off in terms of, you know, do you want to save on electricity? Are you, um, do you plan to add a lot of devices in the near future? Or do you just want like a small form factor device that you just chuck it into the closet and forget it? And really at the end of the day, it's gonna be up to you to decide if this suits your needs. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you found this content useful or else. If you have any opinions about the devices that I've selected today, or if you have any thoughts of your own, I wanna see them down in the comments, you cowards. This has been Automation Haven. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Yeah!
another classic for the history books. Shows your feet. Mm -hmm. Seals and piggies. You need to meet my wife. She'd love your antics. Bro, what?